everybody, Alex from Al's Adventures, and I got a cool video for you guys. I'm gonna talk about the process that I have gone through learning how to cut the ball in slow pitch softball. Now, I wanna talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, um, everything in between, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get to it. First thing I want to talk about is just to, to put it out there that I am not a professional. I, you know, I just play a lot of softball. Right now I currently play in D's, um, but I'm not a major player. I don't cut the ball amazing. Um, I, it, like I said, I'm still in the process of learning how to cut. Every once in a while it comes out really well, sometimes it doesn't. So it's a really hard thing to do and if you take your time to do it, it'll start paying off. Initially, I couldn't cut the ball to save my life. Um, I either kept popping up or going straight into the ground. So as of recently, as of like the last like month and a half in tournaments, um, I've kind of been seeing the fruit of the process um, as some of the cuts are starting to come out looking the way they should be, um, but I still got a long way to go. So by all means, I'm not an expert, this is just the process and I'm just an average dude. So I just hope this helps someone. <laughs> With all that being said, this is kind of the process. So the first thing that I had to think about was just changing my mechanics in general for learning how to cut the ball. Um, I feel like cutting the ball was just a completely different mechanic that kind of went against everything that I learned in baseball growing up. Um, in baseball, you kind of learn about, uh, you know, getting the head of the bat to the ball, meeting it in the zone, which the zone is kind of about your chest to your knees most of the time. So you're ha having to get pretty low. So you're kind of down here, right? And then you're, you're meeting the ball, you're kind of coming up here. So the the bat path was just kind of more, how would you say, it was like kind of upwards more. So many times you'd catch a ball here, that path was up. Um, initially, when starting to play softball, I was able to make this work for me. The path was very much kind of in that upwards motion. Now with cutting the ball, what's been really different is the bat path now goes from, you know, going up to kind of starting downwards. So if you guys can kind of see, it kind of goes here <laughs> instead of starting here. So it was a very big change for me. and. I'll be the first to say it, it was terrible. I, I gave up on cutting the ball um, when I first started. I was like, I was, I was hitting it straight into the ground or popping it up straight up. And it was a really frustrating thing. The, and and I, I guess that's, that's my big thing with cutting the ball is that it's just, it's frustrating, but man, when it happens, when you do it, it's amazing, um, best feeling ever. Either way, um, the mechanics was the first part to, to learn. It was super hard, had to pretty much change everything that I knew of in my head. Second part of the process that uh, also took me a while was figuring out a way that cutting the ball felt comfortable to me. Now, I, normally or i used to hold the bat like this kind of your regular baseball grip uh you know knuckles over your finger knuckles you know your yeah regular baseball grip um now i tried cutting the ball like this and i just couldn't do it it didn't feel comfortable for me um i don't know why there's a lot of there's a ton of guys out there that cut the ball that hold the bat like that um 
but it just wasn't for me. So then, as, as a lot of you guys in the software community know, there's a couple of ways to hold the back. You can either drop a finger, maybe drop two fingers. You can either overlap one, two, three, or you could just do a full overlap. Um, I played with some of these and it came down to two ways that I felt more comfortable holding the bat when trying to cut the ball. So it was down to a three finger overlap or a two finger overlap. Now, a one finger overlap felt nice, but I had very little back control. Um, I could not hit to the right side or to the, like, it, it was just hard for me to control the bat and I couldn't get much power off of it either. Um, I'm not a big dude. Um, I don't have a whole lot of power, so I really have to make use of what I got. So um, what I ended up going with was a two finger overlap. Now the two finger overlap made it feel comfortable for me if I happened to see the ball go outside to be able to swing at that outside pitch. Um, but at the same time, it still felt good enough to where I felt like I could really get the bat out ahead and um, cut the ball. So um, I went with the two finger overlap and I, a friend of mine, um, Batflip BP, I think right now he's doing like a full overlap or like a, a three finger overlap, I, I don't remember. Um, and he, he's smashing the ball right now. Um, but it's just up to preference. Um, really, it it's whatever you like. Um, but I will say for me, the overlap grip is what helped me cut the ball a little bit more. And the thing about overlaps is it's extending your bat a little bit. Um, so it gives you more what people in the softball community is called whip. I'll be honest, I'm still trying to figure out what all that means. I'm assuming that it just means that you have more bat length. So I'm assuming it just means you have more Sorry, my camera. I, I'm assuming it just means you have more bat length, which in turn kind of helps you get that bat out ahead. Um, and I'm assuming that's what they're meaning by what. Um, either way, it was what was comfortable to me. So third was practice. I practiced a ton trying to cut the ball. And like I said, at the beginning, it just, I was getting really frustrated. I was hitting it straight into the ground or straight up into the air. And the thing about cutting the ball is if you miss, you miss. So with a ball, when you're cutting it, you kind of really want to aim for slightly under the middle of the ball to really get that like cut motion. So instead of like here, you're kind of wanting to hit the ball a little bit under here so that you can get that backspin. And if you miss when cut swinging, it's terrible. Um, so I'll have some examples of uh, kind of what I mean. So to start off, we'll go with topping the ball. So if you cut swing and you hit the ball here, that ball is only going one direction, which is down. <laughs> um, and here's some examples of that. frustrating but it's not the end of the world sometimes you can really top the ball have it go down but it gives you a pretty it gives you a chance of getting on base because if you're at least hitting the ball hard enough well that ball has a chance of getting through the infield so that's great now if you miss the ball under there's only one way for it to go it's straight up in the air and this part was the most frustrating for me. So here's some examples of me doing that.
when it goes straight up in the air, it, I mean, it's an easy pop fly. Um, your average person should be able to catch that ball. And it happens a lot because you're aiming to hit it at the bottom half of the ball anyways, like you miss a lot down here and you pop up a lot. And that was the part that frustrated me the most, um, was the popping out. I, I, I don't like popping out. I don't think anyone does, but that was happening. So real quick, I want to talk about, um, ax fat. So as a lot of you guys know, um, I am an ax guy, uh, ain't no hiding that. So I'm a little bit biased, but either way, um, I believe that you should enjoy any bat that you want to swing. This is just happens to be the bat that I like. Um, ax bat. Uh, you guys can get a discount for 20% off off of any Axe Bat using my code, Owls Adventures, right down below. Um, yeah, we got, this is the flare knob, this is the dual stamp version. I will say, this bat holds up compression like crazy. I don't know what it is. I believe this bat initially um, tested at like 265, 270, somewhere around there. Um, it's still testing at like 255. I use this bat for leagues, non-U trip tournaments, and U trip tournaments. It's got probably a good like 300 swings on it. Um, still testing at like 255. So amazing bat. This is what I like. This is the flared knob. Something that I'm getting used to uh, because I do really like the OG knob as well. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to like it and I'm seeing that it works pretty well with my cut swing as well. So. Uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. I took about like a month, almost two months from learning how to cut the ball. I was just like, hey, why am I changing something that's working for me? It doesn't make sense. But I want to continue growing and being able to, and, and like I, I want to continue furthering, you know, into the, the softball space. And I see a lot of guys just learning how to cut or saying that they cut swing you know, can really help you um, kind of further your level a little bit. So I wanted to have that tool in my bag. And, you know, I took a break there for two months and I was like, you know what? Um, my friend Batflip from Batflip BP, you know, it was all about sticking to it. And, you know, I have my friend Jay Duran, um, you guys have probably seen him on the Big Ben videos for the Axe Bats. Um, you know, it, it's all about sticking with the, you know, just practice, 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 practice. And so that's what I did um, over like two, three months with my brother. Every time we practice, it was practicing, cut swing, all that. Then it was learning how to get confidence to use it in tournaments. Initially, I didn't have the confidence. I would try maybe one or two and then just kind of mm -hmm. let it be. And I had to go back to my regular swing because I wasn't, I, I was either getting out from it or it just wasn't coming out the way I wanted it to. Then I kind of switched to doing it at leagues and being like, hey, you know, at least one or at least every other at bat during the league, it's going to be a cut swing. And slowly, slowly but surely over the last like two, three months, I got really comfortable with pulling out a cut swing if I needed to, or if I wanted to. And um, as of recently in the last about two, three tournaments, um, I have been using that cut swing to, like almost every at bat. Um, just to continue building my confidence with using that cut swing. And I will say um, that it, it's pain, it's starting to pay off. I'm starting to see the payoff from it. Not every cut swing, it looks amazing. Um, but what really helps with the cut swing is that instead of the ball making contact going up, um, oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, depending on who you are, but giving, having kind of this more arch type uh, ball track, 
um, when you cut the ball, it comes out more in a line drive. So it comes out in a straighter path. Um, sometimes, and that I've noticed when I cut the ball, if it's really high, it almost kind of has this path. Um, and it's really hard to read the ball, or at least um, I've noticed that uh, for some outfielders, it can be hard to read that ball. So oftentimes it's coming down this way and you're either reading it short and it ends up skipping, like skimming underneath you. Um, or when it does have kind of that more line drive uh, path and not this big loop, um, sometimes you read it wrong and next thing you know, you have to jump or it's just right over your glove, right over your head, um, and it's by you and it's hitting the fence. So that's what I've really uh, liked about it. So here are some examples of some of the good cut swings I've had um, over the last couple tournaments. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about the process of me le learning how to cut a swing. I definitely want to keep working at it. So if you guys have any tips for me, please let me know in the comments. Uh, reach out to me on Instagram, um, Alex's Adventures. I would really love to just learn how to do this all the time, automatic, um, and I'm gonna keep practicing doing so. Guy on my team, his name is Junior, who's got that cut swing, I mean, pretty much down to a science. The dude can cut the ball, and I mean, we're talking about home runs that are barely skimming the fence, but still going like 330, 340, um, because of that line drive path. It, it's just crazy. I mean, we're talking about hitting the fence, like middle of the fence, top of it. It's, it's wild, but he's got it down to a science, and all it is is just practice. So, um, I'll show some examples of the good cuts that I've had. And
And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, something a little bit different. Until next time, go find adventure, go play some ball. Peace out.